We're at Ebon Field and Kohler where tonight the uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian Co-op football team takes on the Howards Grove Tigers in the first game of the Central Lakeshore Conference football season this year. Uh, alongside the coach Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Chris, both teams come in with uh, not a real good record. Uh, Howards Grove comes in one and three. They won their last game convincingly over Rosholt, 28 to nothing. Uh, Christian come or Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian comes in with a two and one record, and uh, they've looked good at times. Yeah, they have, and uh, it all matters now because there's only six teams in the CLC, and so basically it's very simple. You play a five-game schedule, three games you get into the playoffs. So every game is important. Everything is focused. You know, the non-conference is all the preparation time. Now this is where it's time to show your money. All right, ladies Last now, week, starting, uh, starting Kohler, Christian, Sheboygan, Lutheran didn't play a game. Yeah. They had a bye. Uh, since the start of the season, the Howard's Grove, Grove has been playing every week. Do you think that plays in as an advantage for three, uh, the Sheboygan Lutheran team, or uh, Howard's Grove got the advantage having played all the time? I would rather play every week because that way you get a chance to see everybody. But on the other hand, if you have made some mistakes through those first three games, maybe Kohler, Lutz, and Christian can fix all the things that they haven't got right. So, you know, I like playing all the time because that way you get experience, you get to see more opportunities, you get a week off. But it does give them uh, two extra weeks to stay sore, two extra weeks to kind of look at tape of Howard's Grove and get ready for this. And we know that when we come to this field, always crazy things happen. So I'm excited usually, for tonight. <laughs> usually it's a kickoff return for a touchdown. Uh, now, we're real happy because it's not raining. You know, we're not getting wet. But I'll tell you, the wind has really picked up, and I would have to think that the team that can run the ball the best has got a big advantage. Yeah, last week it was rain and cold and windy. Today it's about 65 degrees, but that goofy lake decided to kick off this south wind, which they said they're going to do all day. But you're right. Kohler Luther Christian has got about four players at this kind of interchange running the football. So, you know, they like to run the football. And knowing Howard's Grove over the years, they're probably going to want to run the ball as well. So maybe it's who has less turn war is going to make the difference. But like I said, being the first night here, I'm kind of excited to see what happens here. They are doing a dedication at halftime, so you're going to want to stick around for that. No interviews. Uh, we're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff for tonight's football game. Every day, thousands of community and school groups, volunteer and government producers, technical staff and residents reach out to your community through one of the most powerful communication tools available, cable TV. Peg Access produces more new local programming each week than all the programming produced by NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and PBS combined. Peg Access channels provide communities with a diverse, independent, and local voice. Thank you for watching and for your continued support of public, education, and government access television. In Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. Whether you ride a bike or drive a car, you must yield the right-of-way to pedestrians at marked and unmarked crosswalks. At intersections, always look for pedestrians before making a turn. And slow down in school zones and neighborhoods to keep our kids safe. Share and be aware. We're all responsible. This is Ed Hearn of the 1986 World Champion New York Mets. I remember being on top of the world, but health issues ended my career. I was diagnosed with the devastating disease FSGS. Three kidney transplants later, I'm still fighting. FSGS has no effective treatment, no cure, and it's the second leading cause of kidney failure in children. As an ambassador for the NEFCARE Foundation, I'm working to find answers for these kids. Visit www.nefcure.org and join me in the fight. Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian is uh, getting ready to uh, do the kickoffs. Aiden Hogan will do the kicking chores for uh, Sheboygan Kohler. Maybe we'll go with Sheboygan Kohler because Christian is from Sheboygan, right? Hey. KLC, it sounds good too. Hogan and Fritz back to receive. Hogan on the kick for KLC. Travis Stanchik, it looks like, is one of the deep backs back there, along with Ethan Brinkman. 
And the ball is kicked into the end zone. A strong kick. That's where that wind paid big dividends there, Chris. Yep, and no kickoff return. But it's early. It's going to be first and 10 for the Tigers on the 20 yard line. Luke Stanix is their quarterback, completing 50% of his passes. But they also like to run the ball. And Luke is their leading rusher as well. Reinemann is though wide to the left. And they get a wide out on the other side. Handoff to the running back, getting to the outside is number 22, Alex Strigi. A lot of room to run. It's a first down too, Chris. Ball three of number 22, Alex Strigi. Give him 17 yards on the pickup. It's Luke Stratic. Stratic. Got a little help there from assistant coach Doug Johnson. Longtime umpire and a basketball official. and Helps here at Howard's. Right up the middle and a uh, short gain that time, maybe about four yards. Street on a carry. It's going to be second down and seven. Streak, their third leading runner. Like I said, both teams like to carry the football. Shotgun snap is fumbled and uh, in an effort to pick it up. You think so? Covered up by it looked like he Stanchik. went down, but yeah, he before did. he picked it up, he may have uh, had it before his knee was down, but uh, that's what the officials decided. Yep. A big third down play. The Christian Eagle Bombers. Pitch out, going around the uh, right side and uh, stop short was uh, Ethan Brinkman. It's gonna be fourth down. Ball carried by Brinkman for the Tigers, spraying on the tackle for KLC. Picks up about five yards on the run, but it's gonna be fourth down. Fourth and five, ball around 43. I'm not sure automatically that they're punting and they are not, Marty. They are going oh, for they it. Yeah, you're right. Marcus Bowman is uh, wide to the left. And uh, now we get a timeout by uh, Sheboygan. They were not uh, expecting this, uh, Chris, and neither was I. No, and uh, most of the time when you're at midfield or not even at midfield, you bring out the punt team, but uh, confidence in their run, the Tigers are, and uh, they were gonna go for it. Early in the ball game, there's a 10.02 left in the first quarter, no score. They like the run play to the right, Chris. Gained pretty good yardage on that. Seems the way that they've been going yeah. every time. Now we have the windows closed right in front of us. Uh, just to our left are the uh, Howard's Grove coaches. They've got the windows open and uh, there's a pretty nice breeze blowing in. Probably just about right. And off going to the uh, right and busting through getting very close was a streak. I think it's gonna be short, Marty. Boy, I thought he was going to get there easily, and someone from KLC got the uh, trip up, and it's going to be a turnover. See if Kohler Luther in here, you'll see the replay, Marty. There he looks like he had an opening and all of a sudden. Yeah, good tackle made over there. We couldn't catch the number of that kid, but. Yeah, these are tough numbers to read, Marty. Against the jersey, I can't read those numbers. 
Well, now we get a late flag fly in. Horowitz was uh, the ball carrier. Now we've got him down as a wide receiver. And uh, he ran out of the quarterback slot that time. Yep. I got him for uh, nine carries on the air and making ten. Face mask on, uh, on Howard's Grove. That is good cutback. Yeah, I am. Braden Van Ness was their quarterback, too. Ball is spotted at the 18 yard line. Bad snap. This time they give it to the up back, and he gets hit at the line of scrimmage. It's Caleb Kelly. Yeah, Marty. he's going to pick up maybe a yard or so. Kelly will do a lot of the ball carrying also. And we know him from his basketball successes over at Christian High. Ball carried by Kelly for KLC. Olsen on a tackle for Howard. Gain a one on that play. This time he keeps it himself, Marty. Oh, a little late getting my head up. Yeah, that's my bad. I normally am uh, usually jabbing me in the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> that was the play before with Caleb Kelly. Looks like it's going to set up a third nine under nine minutes in quarter number one. Yeah, it's going to be at the 10 yard line. That was a pickup of seven yards, Chris, according to my. It's going to be third down in about three. Now, here you would think it's four down territory, Marty. Oh, definitely. And you're this definitely. close. Definitely. We got the quarterback under center this time. Aww. And second back through following Ooh. his fullback and uh, barrels forward. It looks like he's got enough for the first down. We'll have to check it out. It's going to be close either way. I believe that was Kelly again. Kelly a pretty good call. <laughs> you can see, watch that lead back. Got a good block right at the line of a. And it is a first down. Ball spotted on the seven yard line. Eight. First and goal, KLC from the eight. I think that's big Alex Tim leading the way. I think this one goes to Tim. Yeah, Tim is the fullback. He'll do a lot of the blocking, Chris. And uh, every once in a while, you know, they throw him a bone, give yep. him the ball. Well, he's coming in, he's their leading rusher. Not the most carries, but he has the most yards. Down to the five yard line, a pick up a two that time. Boy, I'm impressed so far with uh, KLC. Maybe it's a change of colors. Really? On a back slips through. That was Kelly. Broke through at the line of scrimmage and uh, pretty much walked in. There you see the replay yeah. almost untouched, as like Marty said. Good blocking up front. Hogan is going to attempt the extra point. Holding is uh, Braden Van Ness. And we get uh, a whistle stopping action. Penalty, and now they think they're going to send the uh, regular offense back in, Chris, to go for two. Well, you got, got an offside. Yeah, you got Alex Tim, who's 6'1 uh, and uh, 240, carrying the ball. He's a load. The largest person on the team, and he doesn't play the line. But uh, he can move people. All righty, they're lining up for the two-point conversion. Kelly is the deep back. They hand it to him following Tim and uh, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. They're going to get the extra point, however. They did get the two yards. So two-pointer with uh, 7.47 left in the first quarter. Sheboygan, Lutheran, Kohler, Christian, 8. Howard's Grove, 0. Usually, a texting and driving prevention ad would show you some shocking statistics, or maybe a sad family member that lost someone. They might even show you the last text they sent to scare you. But one of the most scariest statistics is about time. Specifically, the amount of time you're not able to watch the road. 
This video was submitted by a student through the Teens Drive Smart program. For more information on teen safety, visit teensdrivesmart.com. Back at uh, Evan Field and Kohler, where uh, Sheboygan Kohler has uh, just scored a touchdown and a two-point conversion. He did, did a little uh, trickaroo there on the extra point, shifting out of the normal kick for uh, extra point, and it caused uh, Howard to step offside, gave him half the distance of the goal, and then they just powered it over for the two-point conversion. Maybe it's that two-week preparation. Who knows? Could have been. Yeah, we've seen that before. Well, the, and, way, the, <laughs> the way that uh, Hogan kicked the ball before, I would not mess around but kick it again like that. He showed great leg behind the strong south wind. Let's see if he can kick it that far starting the second half. <laughs> Going against the wind. The approach and the kick, line drive, a knuckleball type kick, and it bounces <laughs> over the head of uh, Zach Fritz. And uh, they will have, Howards will have it first and 10 at the 20. The light. Hey, we're no longer in the dark. Now we kind of know what we're doing. We got four wide outs, two to the left, two to the right. In the shotgun for Howard's Grove is Luke Stanchuk. I think the field, the uh, people on the field have to adjust that we just turn the lights on. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> we'll blame it on Doug Johnson. <laughs> Oh, one of the links got caught. John Welna. I know John Welna was over there. I know Todd Decker used to do this too. Yeah, I, I, think I think that, that is Todd. Todd. Yeah, yeah, he's got the down marker. Yeah, I think he's got... Well, now he doesn't. Now, Oh, now he must have an official's... Oh, he's got to put the... It on the the uh, little clip on, right? Yep, the 25. Good snap. Quarterback trying to get it up to the 20. Stanzik, uh, little to no gain there. Good defense played by uh, Sheboygan Kohler. I think that was the first time they didn't go right, Marty. I think they went left one play, maybe the second play, and every, but everything after that, you're right, has been to the right. Well, and the reason they don't go to the left is because they don't get much. Defense has been uh, pretty stout so far for uh, the Crusader Eagle Bombers. There's oh. a whole lot of movement. Yeah, it'll be a question mark if the defense stepped offside or not. They're going to go illegal procedure. No offside on the defense. Silly penalty. Very silly penalty. You stop a no gainer and then you give him free five. Yep. Jumping offside. It'll be first and five from the 25. Oh, pardon, give me, check that. It's second down and five at the 25. Zach Fritz uh, wide to the left and uh, Ethan Brinkman way out to the right hand side. Second back through, has an opening. And uh, getting stopped at about the 34-yard uh, line was the Howard's Grove running back, Alex Strigi. Ball carried by Strig for Howard's well, Grove. Sometimes they call it Strig, sometimes they call it Strigi. Ten-yard pickup on that play. It's going to be first and ten ball on the 35-yard line. Ken Raider. Now uh, doing the announcing. Five wide receivers, Chris. And a quarterback keeper. Knew that was coming. Yep. Oh. Hey, gets a good gain. Uh, missed tackle at about the uh, 36 or 37. Allowed him to uh, scamper forward. 
It's going to be second and short. Well, that's what the goal was when you get five receivers spread out is to create an opening up the middle. But uh, it looked like there was going to be a lot of running room. But then, you, like you said, there was a defender in the way, but uh, broke that tackle. High formation. Give it to the first back. And uh, he's hit oh behind my. the line of scrimmage and stopped for no gain. Good defensive play. You know, I'd love to call the names of the kids, Chris. I just can't tell some of those numbers. Yeah, that was Michael Gesh. Stop. He is their leading tackler, too, number 64, 6'2 junior. And, oh, I thought it would be fourth down. Oh, no, it's, yeah, it's sec, third down. It's third down. Yep. Third and less than a yard. yard. Yep. Tanchik under center, he's going to do the quarterback sneak, and he's got the first down. Gets it out over the 45 to about the 47. Give him a gain of three. Well, if you're just joining us for the first time, we've hit the trifecta. We were at north two weeks ago. Last week we were at south, and now very fortunate to come out here. And We're trying to keep people from calling the station and saying, why don't you cover that Sheboygan team? Yeah. We're doing a good job this year. Yep. I know we'll be back here one more time in October. Yep. I believe they play Oostburg that I think night. you're right. And they're leading the conference 1-0. and all. The rest of the conference hasn't played yet. Striege on the carry. Picks up good yardage. Give him a gain of six. Yeah. Oh, and Howard's Grove is just up the street, so it's nice to see them play, yeah, too. Yeah, the only, the only issue is that they have uh, Time Warner as their cable service out there. They don't have charter. So I don't think they can no. get our broadcasts. There's the right side, Marty. There's that right good. side. And getting good yardage that time was Stanchik. It's going to be first and ten for the Tigers. They watch film too. Ball spotted on the 37. Howard's has played. Shinocton, Keel, and Mantuak Lutheran, which were all losses, and beat Reedsville 28 well, that was to nothing. Reedsville was yeah. 28 to nothing. Yeah, well, Rushold beat KLC last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, you are correct. Brinkman is the slot back out here on the left. And a good tackle made right at the line of scrimmage. That stop, I think, was made by uh, Kowitz. Yep, quarterback. He's the second leading tackler on the team. Three minutes and five seconds left in the first quarter. It seems like a long quarter, Chris, for all these running plays. Definitely is a beautiful night, except for the wind for the fans. Up here in the booth, pretty comfortable. Not so bad. Reineman is uh, wide to the left. We've got a wide receiver off to the right-hand side. Quarterback keeper cuts it back over the middle. He's got good yardage. And knees goes down at the 30-yard uh, line, or just inside the 30. Well, I know they had the youth KLC teams out here, and that was a good job if you're a quarterback to... Sometimes when you're running back or quarterback, you got to read the holes. That time, uh, he could have gone outside or tuck it inside, which he did, and that's where the hole was, and he had a nice big gain. Third down and three. Nice drive by the Tigers. Brad Olson is uh, the up back, number 44. The deep back is uh, Alex Strigi. Howard uh, Stanchek still at quarterback for the Tigers. Howard's is yet to put the ball in the air, but they are against the wind. Second back, Streaky getting to the outside. He's got room. He's got the first down before he's pushed out of bounds inside the 25 yard line. Brinkman with a nice kick out block out there, number three for Howard. 
Nice seal by Brinkman. Pickup of only five on the play. It looked like he gained more than that, Chris. First and 10. Ball on 25 yard line. Olsen now is a slot back out here on the left. Right up the middle. Well, trying to probably keep him honest. Yeah, probably a good idea. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Maybe under two minutes, Marty. Yep, clock rolling. Man in motion is uh, Brinkman. There's going to be your first throw, maybe. Stanchek pulls it down. He's got pretty good uh, running ability, Chris. He's pretty nifty out there. And uh, gets it down inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. A pickup of eight. First attempted pass. Well, but he didn't attempt it. Nope. Sam Which... Kohler came in and uh, kind of slipped and fell. Hours. It's going to be third down and three to go. High formation again. They run out of this exclusively, and this time Strage gets to the outside. He's going to get to the end zone. Touchdown. Good job of stretching the ball out to make sure. Now that was a drive. Yes, sir. Last week. Every drive was about three, four minutes at that South game. 24-yard touchdown run. Here you'll see it. And as Marty mentioned, watch how he tries to reach for the pylon. And being two down, it looks like Howards is uh, going to go for the two-point conversion, Chris. Or are they? Yep. Yes, they are. Well, Strage and Olsen in the backfield. And a pitch out. Oh, oh there's, there's a, a definite hold out there. And it uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. The extra point was not good. <laughs> so with uh, 103 left in the first quarter, it's uh, Sheboygan Kohler 8, Howard's Grove 6. One of my most rewarding experiences as a dietitian has been actually quite recently just a year ago when I met Donna because she was so motivated and ready to lose weight and to get healthier. Well since I've met Sue and listened to her guidance I've lost about 80 pounds and I have been taken off almost all my medications. To me, I mean that's something to shout about. I just see the future getting better and better and better because I'm getting healthier and healthier and healthier. Back at Evan Field in uh, Kohler where uh, Howard's Grove has just scored on a 24-yard touchdown run by their uh, good running back, Alex Strag. He has, uh, so far, Chris, nine carries for 68 yards here in the quarter. Nice six-minute and 40-second drive. Almost saw our first pass of the night, but... Uh, the quarterback Stanchuk uh, pulled it down and ran. Uh, he's had a nice night so far, too. I've got him for 12, 21, 32, 39 yards, and six carries. Well, and KLC is only going to have the win for about a minute. And then they got to switch ends. And so well, far, eight minutes and 40 seconds, Howards has controlled the ball. Let's see how Brinkman does kicking against the wind. A bouncer picked up at about the 24-yard uh, line. Zach Fritz on the tackle, number 21. Andrew Kowitz was the uh, ball carrier. It's going to be first and 10 for uh, Sheboygan Kohler. 
Ball on the 32 yard line. I formation, man in motion is Chorwitz. And pass it to him. That almost looked like a backward pass. You better pick up the ball. Howard's Grove has it. They're going to run that extra point down inside the 10 yard line, inside the 5 yard line. Bad pitch. And it's going to be first and 10 for Howard's Grove. Deep in Sheboygan Kohler Company. Country. They're going to put it on the five yard line. I thought he got it deeper than that, but uh, Howard's Grove is in business, Chris. Got Olsen and Strag in the backfield. Give it to Strag off the left tackle. He gets close to the end zone and he's in. Touchdown. So the last two plays that they've run, Chris, have been touchdowns. Interesting play call there on that pass. And you know what? I'm not sure that it really was backwards. Uh, I, I thought it was. Did you? Yeah. Good replay, Scott. You see Stray going into the end zone again, and uh, Howard's going for two. Give it to Stray. He barrels in. It's a two point conversion. It makes it now 14 to 8 for the Tigers of Howard's Grove. Ian Ralston was a combat medic who was injured in Iraq. When I met Ian, I knew he had to help him get his housing grant, an auto grant, and every benefit to live as normal a life as possible. And we did. PVA has helped hundreds of thousands of veterans get the care and benefits they've earned. My name is Jason Stevenson, and I work for Paralyzed Veterans of America. Paralyzed Veterans of America, changing lives, building futures. Chris, we got to give uh, credit to you. You called it back in the opening. You said, even like last week, you said those turnovers can be huge. Well, tonight, obviously, the weather was not a factor, but uh, turnovers are critical. It cost uh, Sheboygan Kohler a touchdown. We well, have it just seems like the wind, if it's possible, came out of the sails of a. Uh, KLC there, they have a nice eight point lead and you know, you've done a pretty good job and next thing you know, you're down Punch. six points. Yeah, for sure. Brinkman's kick is uh, picked up by Kowitz again at the 25 and not much. He gets it out to about the 28 yard line and that's all. And that's Zach Fritz's second. Kickoff return stop. Fritz boys uh, are uh, good baseball players, Chris. Well, that's one of those names you always think about in Howard's Fritz. Her dad is a principal out there. He's standing right next yep. to me. He's one of the assistant coaches. Coached football for many years out at uh, Chilton. Yep. Second back through Kelly gets it to about the 30. Not much there, maybe a yard if that. We'll give him one, but it was hardly a yard. It's going to be second down and nine. Clock running under, under 20 seconds. You know, I could have swore that clock just said uh, 30 and it rolled down to 19. Most likely the last play. If they get it off, they're going to let the clock run. Why? Yeah. You got the wind. And we're at the end of one quarter of play. Howard's Grove on top, 14-8. to eight. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of action here at Evan Field tonight. So if you could, please bear with me. Tonight at halftime, we'll be honoring... Thank you. 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 Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks. But you can take control. 
the Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. This video was submitted by a student through the Teens Drive Smart program. For more information on teen safety, visit teensdrivesmart.com. All right, in the backfield now for uh, Sheboygan. Kohler is uh, Chorowitz and uh, Caleb Kelly. And Kelly bouncing to the outside. He's got some room. He gets it out near the first down, outside the, uh, just near the 40, outside the 35 for sure. See where they spot it. It's gonna be uh, spotted at about the uh, 36. It's gonna be third down, and a bad snap it looked like, and a big loss on the play for Chorowitz. Well, that was not a good two series. Oh. After looking so impressive on the first drive, constantly making mistakes, and now you're forced to punt into the wind. Oh, this is gonna be tough. Good snap, kick is away, it's a high kick. And fair caught at about the 43 yard line. 25. It's gonna be first and 10 for Howard's Grove. Now well, we're gonna see what the defense can do here for Sheboygan Kohler. Ball spotted on the 43, it's gonna be first and 10. They've uh, gotten their sea legs for sure after that opening touchdown drive by uh, Sheboygan Kohler. Brinkman is wide to the right. Stanchuk under center. Gives it to the second back through and right through the middle and getting big yardage was uh, Alex Streg. And the Tigers are starting to throw their weight around a little bit. <laughs> for sure, Chris. Ball is spotted at the 43-yard uh, line on the other side of the field. Strike finished with 73 yards. He's now up to uh, 87 yards. Four receivers this time, Marty. Yeah, they did that before. The quarterback wound up taking it just like this. Oh, good block there. Thinking a solid hit was uh, for uh, the Tigers. It was Olsen, I think. Pick up a five yards. Lucas Knuth on the stop, number 38. Sophomore. Olsen is the up back. Strike is the deep back. Give it to him. He's got running room off the right side. And a pretty good tackle made out there at the 34-yard uh, line. A short gain of three. Strike carrying the ball again. Tripped up at number 22, Kelly, Kelly KLC. It's going to be third and two. Kelly had the initial two. hit there. Howard's ball just but, uh, Very short yardage for Howard's on third down, just need two. And the way they're ripping off yards, Marty. Yeah, exactly. Brad Olson is doing a great job in the backfield blocking for his mate, helping to spring him for big yardage and another great hit by Olson. I'm not sure if Stray got the first down, but he wouldn't have got that far without the blocking. Yep. I thought Howard's kind of jumped there. They're getting a good push. 
They're saying that the uh, after short, it's going to be fourth and a yard. Well, they went on it for it before. There's no Def doubt they're going for yeah, it exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. Watch for a quarterback sneak. See if he can read where the defensive tackles are. Sheboygan Kohler drifting up. They've got a lot of men at the line of scrimmage, and they hit the quarterback, and I don't think he got it, Chris. They're and spotting him back. He lost the yard. And a second stop. Turnover on downs. Chris, when you said look for the quarterback sneak, my initial thought was I don't like that because he's not your top runner, and, you know, he's not going to get much of a push. And uh, that was the case. You know, you would have sounded a lot cooler if you would have just said that ahead of time. Hey. Now no. you just. <laughs> <laughs> Criticizing you, right? You yeah, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and they fake to the running back. Quarterback keeps it. Quarterback option. He gets it out over the 35-yard line. Ball carried by Michael Horowitz. There'll be three extra minutes at halftime today for some dedication. So a long half, about 18, I think, and then plus three minutes. So 20-minute half today. Oh, boy. A little misdirection. Yeah, not much doing there either. That was probably, they may have stayed at the line of scrimmage, but uh, certainly wouldn't be surprised if it was a loss. It's going to be third down. By About third and seven, but I'll tell you, throwing into this wind is very difficult. Howard did such a nice job of controlling the, f the clock in the first quarter and taking all the time, and chances of them throwing are going to be little. Horowitz in uh, motion, they pitch it out to Kelly, tries to cut it back up the middle. He gets it up over the... 40 yard line to the 41, but he's going to be short of the first down. Good burst of energy by Kelly, but he just had too many yards to gain. Big 79. Willie Goldkey there on the tackle. Good, good replay, Scott. Brinkman and uh, Zach Fritz are back to return this punt. And we get a whistle prior to uh, the kick. Now, if this is against uh, Howard's Grove, it's going to be a first down for uh, Sheboygan Kohler. I don't think it is. Well, illegal procedure. And again, a foolish penalty. You can't give up five yards when you can't punt into this wind. It's a free five for Howard's again. Here we go. Same cast of characters out there. Another good snap. Kick is away, a wobbler, and that one not going very far, Chris. That's a little bit of a Sheboygan Kohler bounce at the end, but uh, they'll be lucky if the ball is spotted right on the 50-yard line. It'll give Howard's Grove half a field that they have to work with. Great field position. First and 10, they do put the ball right on the 50 yard line. 14 yard punt, Chris? 15, I had. Okay. 35 to the 50. Uh, four wide receivers, two to the left and right. And another running play. Stanchik uh, gets hit at about the 48 to pick up a two. One of these times, Chris, he's going to do that little run to the, one of the sides and stop and throw deep. I think these are all setups. Yep. With the wind now. Exactly. Good point. It's going to be second down for the Tigers. We mentioned they came into tonight's game with the one and three non-conference record. For the next five weeks, they'll be playing conference games. First back is Olsen, and uh, he's chugging away before he's finally pushed back, but uh, he got it inside the 45-yard line. <laughs> Howard's wants a penalty. Too much shoving, too much of a scrum. Yeah, well, 
Well, that's the officials not calling things early enough, and the running back was still running hard. Yep. He, he just kind of fell on his own. I saw we that the Brewers are heard before they were up one to nothing in the third. Boy, you score five runs against the Cardinals in three games, and off to a whopping one-run start tonight. Yeah, really. It's been a tough uh, goal for the last couple of weeks. Strag is uh, hit short of the first down. He's going to be about two yards short. And uh, boy, it's going to be fourth down again. They'll go for it. Official on this side had him farther back, but the far official had it closer. And the uh, official that spotted the ball went to the closer side for the Tigers. It's a, a nightmare for the stat guy. <laughs> Fourth down. It's time to give it to Streg. He's got the first down over the 40. Ball carried by Streg. You know, it's right on the 40, so we'll call it a two yard gain and a first down. Good run. That time they handed it off, Marty, just what you wanted. Mr. Martin knows what he's talking about once in a while. Hey, it's the first time all year. Well, at least in this park, right before, just rolling down to the four minute lap mark left in the first half. Uh, Howard's Grove on top by a score of 14 to eight. <laughs> you don't think it's a, we're in a 38 minute half so far. <laughs> this is a fast game. Yeah, it's what happens when you run the ball. No passing. Olsen, the first back, is, uh, oh, he's dragging people forward. He gets it inside the 35. Good this, run by Brad Olsen. Some people wonder about football in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. This is what it was like. Run, 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 run. We've had zero passes the whole game. I don't mind. No, and it's like... <laughs> Those of you still care about the Brewers. Brewers up 2-0 at the bottom. Oh, of the Brewers fifth. up 2-0 now. Bottom of, the fifth. bottom of the fifth inning. I hope people aren't turning off our game to watch that. <laughs> that are watching us. No, live. they don't have to watch till the bullpen goes in. Back, first pass of the game, a line drive, sidearm throw that time by oh, Stanchik boy. is incomplete. There goes my early bedtime, Marty. Pass intended for number 21, Zach Fritz incomplete. And now we'll get to move to the bottom of the stat page where the passing <laughs> is. <laughs> I mean, look at that. There's nothing there. The first quarter, nothing. It's all running. Well, and yeah, you know what's always neat, too? The, the quarterbacks all warm up their arms, and they throw balls all over, and the receivers are catching the ball. And then you get to the game, and he doesn't <laughs> even get that close to you. <laughs> and they don't, well, no, then they don't throw. Well, oh, yeah, that way, He too. hasn't warmed up for 45 minutes. How is he supposed to be ready to throw? Oh, that was a good job of uh, solidifying the edge and forcing the ball carrier back up the middle. But uh, the first tackler missed the tackle. Well, good job by, by Chorwitz. And then the first guy missed him before uh, Streg went down. No gainer. Kelly was asking for a foul uh, hold there. and Yeah, I didn't see it. Once again, this is the fourth attempt on fourth down in the half. Stanchik under center, Strag the lone setback. He's triple. Uh, you know what? I thought he kept uh, his knee off the ground, but the official said no, and it's going to be a loss. That was a neat little play, though. I like the way that was set up. Watch. Let's see if his knee goes down. Oh, definitely. Yep. Definitely went down. Ball is spotted on the 38. Loss of four. Quick, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a few of these tonight. Who was the only Kohler player to receive a football scholarship from UWM? Here we go. Second back through is Kelly. Bounces off a couple of tacklers and gets it up to Kohler about the 44-yard uh, line. Drew Eckright in on the stop for Howard. One more time, who's the only Kohler football player to receive a Gain a six at that time. Head on up to the north side of the press box. 
I'll tell you, KLC has got to go a little quicker here. You only have a minute 50. Yeah, you're going to have to do something. Keep it clicking. If you intend to score. Running back. That'll help. Kelly gets it inside the 45-yard line. That'll stop the clock. Nice run that time. But you got to be a little more efficient here on your play calls. We're down to a minute 37, and it's going to start running right now. Coach Savada, you got to get this crew going here. 12-yard pickup. Minute 31 left. I think Chris mentioned that. It's a 14 to 8. Howard's Grove on top. See him running out of the huddle now, Chris. They're hustling a little more. Quick snap. Second back through. Gets it down to the 40-yard line. Better have a play call. Pick up a four oh, and a timeout. timeout. I think and it's a little early for that, but... Uh, I don't, I don't agree with you there, Chris. Well, you only have one left now. Kelly has a boatload of carries, Chris. He's got uh, six in this quarter. He had five in the first quarter, but he only has a, a per yard average of maybe like three or four yards. He broke off a 12 yarder before. But it doesn't seem like he's the, the backbreaker on a long run. And it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult to uh, throw the balls we've mentioned. So you got to have quick passes on the way. And you know, a situation like this, sometimes you know your two-minute drill, it just uh, a few number plays or calls that you could call. To the side, you know. To yeah, the, they're the high school. At least I don't think at this level you're going to call two plays and run. No, I don't mean that. But I'm just saying, okay, let's. You know, you have a thing on your wrist and let's play call play three. Oh, that way. Yeah, you know, just something to be a little more efficient in a situation like this. All so right, we got a split backfield. Man in motion is Chorwitz. They give it to him on the jet sweep. He gets by one. And that's tiger, but then the next Tiger makes a good hit, and that was uh, Trent Benninghaus. Holding, Marty. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's not good. Minute 10 left. It's going to remain second down. It's a spot a foul. Walk off. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a correct answer to the trivia question. The only KLC football player ever offered a scholarship from UWM was our very own Bob Mackey. Congratulations. Congratulations to the KLC youth football staff. Second down and 17. Same play. Yeah, same play. Torowitz gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And he gets Horowitz. out of bounds. So he got back, basically the uh, penalty back, yardage back. But it still puts KLC 40 yards from the end zone with one timeout, 59 seconds left. But they still have to get the first down. Third down and five on the call with a 12-yard pickup. Kelly short on the carry. Do they use their last time out or not? 51, 50, they do. Picks up about three, but he's two yards Final short. With left the Kelly has seven carries for 36 yards in the quarter. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, please stay seated for our great halftime. They gotta get to about the 34. Marty. Yeah, it's uh you gotta get over the 35. Oh, so I don't know. I like the idea of calling that uh, same play again. Because uh Horowitz has uh Chorowitz has a uh, pretty good speed. He is their leading receiver, although they haven't thrown tonight. Yeah, he has ten catches and one of those five guys that carry the football for uh, CLC. Yeah, 
mentioned it before, we'll mention it again. They are having a ceremony here at halftime. You know, stick around for that. Chris mentioned that first back through gets stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Gave him a pickup oh, of maybe. Oh, they're calling him over the line. They're yeah. stopping. That might be enough, I believe. This is where uh, Coach Decker's going to have to come out and decide this little matter. I didn't even think he got there. Yeah, me either. Well, now, if you're KLC, you better have a play called and be on the line as soon as it's measured and they get set. Just have a play called. If it doesn't work, you're obviously going to have to play defense. There you go, Coach Zavada. This is what we're going to run. Coming over to the sideline is Braden Van Ess. Short of the first down. Or we can go and play defense. Yeah, let's do that instead. 41 seconds left, Marty. Yeah, what do you do, Chris? Are you gonna try and go for it? Or are you gonna oh yeah, you got three timeouts left, you have the wind. All you need is one. I guess they couldn't got, find enough guys to uh, do the chain gang, so they went into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Snap is not good. Pass to the outside is incomplete. And again, you, you warm up for all that time before the game and then you don't throw a ball and then you expect your quarterback to throw a couple. Makes it tough, makes it tough. Stanzik uh, pass was incomplete, a little bit short of uh, Brinkman, the intended receiver. We've got wide receivers again all over the place. Maybe he's two warmed left, up. Two right. Maybe he's warmed up now. Another little snap. There's Brinkman a good pass. going deep and way over his intended receiver, Brinkman. That one's not even close. Yeah, but the pass looked good. We've seen just yeah, it even kind of skipped off the grass sort of nice. Yeah, just <laughs> released it a little too early. Jay Cutler wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Matter, Mr. Fritz, you're not a bear fan either. <laughs> you're not a bear fan either. They look good on uh, Sunday. They did for a while. For a while they didn't, but they won. Another little snap. Stanchik uh, running through. He's going to get the first down at the 45-yard uh, line. Pick up a 10. See, Howard is at the line. This is how you do it. First and 10. Looking, looking, flush from the pocket, and he goes down yeah. inside the 40 to about the 37. I think Howard is just going to let it run out. Plus a seven. They're hustling back five seconds, four seconds, and that's going to be the half with Howard's Grove on top by a score of 14 to eight. Ladies and gentlemen, this time I'd like to take this opportunity to start our halftime recognition. First, for Sheboygan Lutheran, it was their homecoming week at Lutheran High School this week. Using the theme of medieval homecoming, the week was packed with events and traditional pep rally and bonfire. At this time, we'd like to recognize Because sometimes, even the rescuers need to be rescued. So just call the Coast Guard Foundation. Find out how you can help at rescuetherescuers.org. Astro and Robert Schumann and the 2014 Shimon Lutheran King and Queen, Rachel Holt and Luke Otten. One more big wave for everybody. Very good, very good. Well, not really. Come on. All right, congratulations, guys.
Next, this is a fantastic opportunity that we have this evening to recognize our Evan Field donors. Seven years ago, the renovation of Evan Field started at that time with an extremely generous donation from the Kohler Company. Our dream to renovate this great facility began. With new stadium seating, new lighting, the start of a new track, and a long-term plan in place, things started moving forward. About 18 months ago, phase two of Evan Field began. A small group came together to put together a plan which called for renovation of the concession stand, completing our track, upgrading our practice facilities, and renovating our varsity soccer field. This time, though, the task was more difficult as we needed to get the community behind this renovation in order for this next step to be completed. After less than 12 months, through the generous donations of the people that we will meet tonight, we were able to move forward. Now, 18 months from the start, we have raised over $480,000. Beyond recognition on the field tonight, donors have been recognized with granite plaques that if you head to the concession stand at the south end of the field, you'll see, on this, and there's also seat plates right below where you may be sitting. This spring, there will also be brick tiles. Let's now recognize those who helped make this happen. We'll start off with our family contributors. First of all, Todd and Jennifer Zimmerman and their family. Sue and Marlene Yeh, Ray and Marlene Wondergen, Ted and Pam Werner, Dirk and Carla Willis, Richard and Kathy Wells, Matt and Jennifer Walton, Eric and Angela Beerkamp, Jason and Amy Unger and their family, Jeff and Tanya Tui, Diane Torkey, Jay and Heather Torkey, Larry Thorpe, Peter and Julia Steiner, Michael and Nicola Sukrek, Jim and Janice Sloan, Scott and Amy Silvestri, Tom and Joni Schnettler, accompanied by some of their grandchildren, Frank and Arlene Schneider, Jim and Christy Richardson, John and Case Reinertson, Steve and Laura Proudman, sorry, Steve Proudman and Laura Cole, excuse me, Liz Piasecki, John and Joyce Peffin, Art and Ruth Perry, Michael and Mary Ellen Pellegrino, Mala and Devraj Pato, Tom and Joe O'Donnell, Jim and Jackie O'Donnell, Scott and Lori Nuro, Jeremy and Kristen Morehouse, and their family, Dennis and Maggie Momowski, Mary Jo McCreary, <coughs> Dave and Nancy Madigan, Chris Lofgren, Jim and Linda Lewis, Bernard and Patricia Langle, Jim and Wendy Kupa. Mike and Mary Crawl, Dan and Jean Cole, David and Nina Kohler, Marcus Knuth, Robert Kenyon, Robert and Tina Hort, 
Henry and Margie Hornick, Rod and Karen Hogan, Jay and Kathy Huckstra, Jeff and Susie Harrell, Jim and Sarah Hakeman, Chad and Robin Hamilton, Randall and Judith Pink, Bruce and Carol Grover, Greg and Jennifer Gross, Chris and Lori Garces, Adam Gedeke and Lauren Haida, Mel and Lori Free, Scott and Brenda Edmonds, Brett and Deb Edgerly, Jim and Laura Conklin, Mark and Leslie Cassidy, Larry and Linda Bryce, Paul and Sarah Breitenbach, Rick and Julie Boyer, Tony and Char Bocchini, Doug and Lisa Bocchini, Cy and Kathy Blazer, Mark and Amy Bisnick, Mike and Jane Bishop, David and Ilsa Bick, Kurt and Heidi Becker, Tom and Joyce Atkins, Kirk and Paula Anderson. I got a whole shirt, but yeah. I got this shirt too, but nobody else is going to make Next, to thank the special organizations who have given to this great project. The Kohler Athletic Booster Club for all of their contributions. Thank you, Booster Club. The Kohler Civic Club. The Kohler High School Student Council. KLC Youth Football. Here representing the Kohler Police Athletic League, Mr. Bill Rutten. So thank you, KPAL. The Kohler School Foundation and the Kohler Soccer Club. Last but certainly not least, we'd like to represent all the businesses who have contributed to this fantastic project. Representing Bank First National, Mike Streg, the Frank G. and Frida K. Bratz Family Foundation Incorporated, Hyden Incorporated, Representing the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 494, Mr. Mike Zimmerman, and John Jacobs, business agent. Certainly this goes without saying, but representing the Kohler Company, and thank you for their many generous donations to this fine school district, Ms. Laura Kohler. Thank you, Kohler Company. Masters Gallery Foods, and a lot, and a great brand, brand new uh, relationship we have with Prevea Health. Representing Prevea Health, Mr. Andy Bagnall, CEO of St. Nicholas Hospital. Salon 511, Sheboygan Chevrolet Chrysler, and last but not least, representing Sargento Foods Incorporated, Michael and Mary Ellen Pellegrino, and Rod and Karen Hogan. There is one last support that we have to throw out. That is the support that comes from Polar Public Schools. This is one of, if not the very finest school district in the entire state of Wisconsin, and the people you see standing in front of you are part of that reason. The people within the walls, the kids, the community, the parents, without the support of all those and without the support of Kohler Public Schools, none of the fantastic renovations or none of the fantastic things that happen inside that building would be possible. So to the Kohler Public Schools, thank you very much.
In closing, we'd like to have a special thanks to Amy Pace, Jim Kenny, Dan Kolb, and David DeBrun for all the work they did behind the scenes. Special recognition for helping to make this day possible. Jim O'Donnell, Matt Maggi, Kathy Huckstra, and Leslie Cassidy. These four people, along with our director of student life, Doug Volkini, helped bring this all together this evening. So if we could, ladies and gentlemen, $480,000 strong, a lot of man hours, a lot of great things that are going to happen for the kids of this particularly fantastic school district. Let's give one final round of applause to all those families, organizations, and businesses who have made this all possible. Donors, as the second half goes on tonight, please stop over the concession stand for a piece of cake and a drink to help celebrate this event. And one shameless final plug. On a final note, we still do need some donations to complete phase two in order to get soccer lights and scoreboards. If you are interested in becoming part of this fine team, please contact Doug Bokini. This little chick has hearing loss. It can be lonely, sad, and often accompanied by ringing in the ears or even loss of balance. But there's good news, because birds have an almost magical way of regenerating their inner ear cells to restore their own hearing, so they can live a happy, chirpy lifestyle. Imagine if science could achieve the same miracle with people. While at Hearing Health Foundation, we support research that is doing just that. Visit us at hhf.org and learn more about the cure for hearing loss and tinnitus. Gift giving is hard. Gift giving is an art. What do you give the person who's got everything? I gave her a heifer. You're giving me a cow for my birthday? It's a farm animal. It's more than a gift. A farm animal helps families in hunger. Gifts like this change lives. Give different. Christmas, Valentine's Day, Hanukkah, whatever you want. Give a family life. It's more than a gift. It's the best gift I ever gave. Every child adopted from foster care remembers their one day. The day he first met his forever family. The day their adoption was finalized. More than 100,000 children are waiting for their one day. My one day was happy. Find out more at nationaladoptionday.org. Hi, this is Cheryl Ray. You know me as Salt from the hip hop group Salt and Pepper. My friend Matthew here has FSGS, a devastating disease that is the second leading cause of kidney failure in children. The Neff Cure Foundation funds research into FSGS and nephrotic syndrome. Please help us fight the battle. Support the Neff Cure Foundation. Visit www.neffcure.org. Thank you. Did you know that your thumbs are some of the scariest things on the planet? <gasps> Every year, an average of 6,000 people lose their lives to thumbs that are used to text while driving. That means that your opposable digit is more dangerous than volcano sharks, airplanes, jellyfish, tigers, lions, tornadoes, roller coasters, hippos, skydiving, spiders, and snakes. Texting while driving is more dangerous than all of those things. So why isn't it one of your biggest fears? This video was submitted by a student through the Teens Drive Smart program. For more information on teen safety, visit teensdrivesmart.com. Before you're treated for breast cancer, get the facts. Women who are told about their breast reconstruction options report feeling in control and experiencing a higher quality of life after cancer. I know because I am one of them. I know because I am one of them. I know because I am one of them. Before you undergo surgery for breast cancer, get the facts. Make sure you know your breast reconstruction options. For more information, visit BroadAusa.org. Getting out of the military, I was missing this camaraderie. It's frustrating when you try and talk to people that don't understand. I still had the anger, I still had the addictions, but we didn't talk about that. Came to a point where it's like, okay, I really need to talk to somebody about this. Family more or less encouraged me, you know, go 
Go to the VA. It's okay to go get help. It's okay to talk to people because it takes true strength to ask for help. Hear veterans' real stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Going to school pregnant, riding the bus, that was hard. You just have all the stares and you have all the questions. When you get pregnant, all the stuff just goes through your mind. Abortion, adoption, keeping him. When you're 15 and pregnant, you can't do it without support. I wanted to give him a better life. I'm Miranda and I chose adoption. We're back at uh, Howard Grove High School. Excuse me, <laughs> Kohler High School, I'm sorry. Evan Field out in Kohler, and uh, we do have some halftime stats. Uh, Chris was talking about old-time football where you run, 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 and then run, run, run some more. Well, that's what we have. Every yard gained in that first half was a running yard. Uh, KLC had 99 yards rushing in uh, 20 carries. Leading rusher was Chorowitz with 48 yards in six carries, and... Uh, Kelly had uh, 12 carries for 48 yards also. For uh, the Howard's Grove Tigers, they were led. They had 161 yards of total offense. We looked this up. So in the first half of this ball game, we had 260 yards of total offense. We looked in our stats from the South game last week. South had 270 yards alone, 270 yards alone in the first half and then tack on the other 223 yards from uh, Green Bay East. You know, it was a whopping, whopping, whopping a lot of yards last week. Uh, considering this, the weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly, considering the weather. Uh, Streg had uh, 16 carries for 100 yards, and uh, the uh, quarterback, Luke Stanchik, had uh, 51 yards in 11 carries. Those were the leading rushers for uh, the Tigers. Uh, Stanchik was 0 for 3 passing, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, no passing yardage in the first half. Scoring went like this, uh, KLC scored on a 5 yard run by Kelly, converted the 2 point conversion, they led 8 to nothing. And then uh, Howard's Grove had a nice drive, scored on a 24 yard touchdown run by Streg, and, uh, but they missed on their uh, 2 point conversion attempt, they trailed 8 to 6. After one play. The kick, well, I should say two plays, the kickoff, and then uh, Sheboygan Luther and Kohler ran a, a type of option pass, but it wasn't a pass, it happened to be a lateral. It was fumbled, picked up by Howard's Grove, and returned down to the five yard line. Their next offensive play, Strike got it in the end zone from five yards out. They converted the two point conversion that time, and uh, that's where we're at right now. Howard's Grove leads it 14 to 8. Chris, your impressions? A uh, couple things. Time of possession, Howard's Grove, 16 minutes of time of possession. Uh, when you put 24, that means only eight minutes of time possession for a KLC. Difference in the ball game, the turnover. If you don't have that turnover, it's basically, you know, a 8-6 lead for uh, KLC. So the turnover and the very short field from the five-yard line made the difference. How about four fourth down attempts by Howard's Grove in the first half? And uh, they didn't make it on three of the four, I no, believe. Yeah, really. And they had to turn it over on downs. Um, not a lot of possessions either, which is something we should, we'll focus more on in the second half. Basically, each team had the ball five times. Uh, six for Howard's, but they just basically ran out the half. But So each possession then gets magnified because everybody's running the ball. You don't get too many opportunities to score. So if you have a chance and you have the wind, you better go and score. Uh, speaking to your point about uh, possession time, I've got, and this is all unofficial, Sh uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler with uh, 19 plays. Howard's Grove, 36. Woo. Yeah, 16 to eight, and then think about the plays. I, you know, the thing is, you, you say, about, oh, you can drain. A lot of these kids play both ways. So it's, you know, you say which team is wearing which team down or you're wearing the defense down. I don't really know <laughs> if that counts because I think both teams get worn down as it goes. It's not like a, a Division One school where, where many of the players only play one way. Uh, where here, um, you play two ways. And if you play two ways on Division One, then you are a little more tighter under the rep. 
Now, very interesting. I was, gonna, I was curious to see what was going to happen here. Howard is going to kick into the win, or with the wind, take the wind in the third quarter. If I was the coach, I'd want the wind for the fourth quarter. That's just, just if I ever was a coach, I want the wind in the end to win the game. I don't want to be going into the wind in the fourth quarter if I have to win the game. But I think their philosophy here is to pin KLC deep and maybe put the game away here in the third quarter. I think one of the things that uh, Sheboygan Kohler has to do is uh, set the edge a little better on their uh, wide plays by uh, Howard's Grove. Next week, uh, WSCS TV will be at Sheboygan South when they host a pier. Uh, we look forward to bringing you uh, that football game. Very big game for South next week. Big, because if they win that one, they're just one game away from making the playoffs. All right, Brinkman on the kickoff. Carries deep, and it's going to bounce into the end zone. Touchback. Sheboygan uh, Kohler will get it on the 20-yard line, first and 10. I believe it's just 8-10, so it's still a really fast game, Marty. Yep. It was a quick first half, and uh, hey, they're one, uh, one play away from tying up the ball game and then an extra point away from uh, taking the lead. So it's uh, definitely a ball game, even though uh, Howard's Grove dominated for the most part that first half. Kelly is the deep back. They give it to him off uh, right tackle. And uh, he picks up about five or six yards. Nice run. Ball carried by Keller for KLC. Number 10, Jonah Gerber making the And if you are KLC here, you want to control the clock like Howard's did. And uh, in this third quarter, and hopefully with the, the wind in that fourth quarter, either be tied or take the lead in that fourth quarter. I think getting a first down is the way you want to start. Yeah, Chorowitz is wide to the left to give it to the second back through and uh, getting the first down was Kelly. There it is. Tough run for him. And you said Kelly had 48 yards at half, correct? Yes, sir. Gerber on the stop again. Kelly on the carry this time. Came in averaging about four and a half yards per carry. 31. KLC is a division four school. Tell you some of the schools that are pretty good at that level. It's an interesting point, Chris. Uh, Howard's Grove is a D5 yes. school, and uh, like you mentioned, Sheboygan Kohler is in Division Four. Yeah, that's because of the three schools combined. But uh, number one ranked in uh, Division Four is Somerset. Broadhead Judah is number two. Marshall, Columbus, and Black River Falls round out the top five schools ranked in oh, Division Four. Nick the key for each of these teams is to win three football games because then you qualify for the playoffs. We got second down and eight, a uh, short gain that time for uh, Kelly. And he breaks through. Goes off nice to the run. right hand side. He took it up the middle and then bounced it to the, uh, to the right side and uh, picked up a good lead block from Alex Tim. Well, the first two minutes is working right to KLC's advantage. They got a couple first downs, got out of their, their own territory. Here you're going to see Kelly. And I like his burst. We say we like him on the basketball court, but he can run the football a little bit too. Good athlete. I'll tell you that uh, Alex Tim is a big guy up front, Chris. He throws yep. a mean block. He's going to lead him on the sweep. And he cuts it back and he breaks it up over the 50 yard line into Howard's Grove territory. And uh, they are establishing the run so far on this drive. Well, he led the sweep, Marty, but he didn't hit anybody that time. He was just kind of like the. Uh, Tim, what? Well, everybody's running away from him. <laughs> That's what, watch him lead here, but he really has nobody. He kind of chips one, but the tackler came up on his left, and I believe that was Fritz again. And uh, should have hit him. Second back through, bouncing it off to the right again is uh, Kelly, and he gets it down to the 40-yard line. Very much like the first drive of the ball game, Marty, where KLC is running the football right at Howard's. They, I believe they struggled a great deal after that first drive, which was way back at the 9.56 mark. They took over and scored at the 7.47 mark. And uh, this is a very impressive drive, but... 
First down and 10, ball spotted right on the 40 yard line. Second back through is Kelly again, and uh, we get a flag thrown in. That's one thing we didn't have much of in the first half, Chris, uh, only two or three penalties. I don't remember Howard's having any. Holding on uh, Sheboygan. I think that's the second hold. They had a couple uh, procedures, but I don't remember Howard's having zero or one penalty at the most. Oh, they did have that one on the two-point conversion. They were offside, I believe. But uh, oh, well, Tigers went pretty fall clean. Was back at the 44-yard line. It's going to be oh. uh, first and 20. Oh, come four. on. They don't even have anybody up that far. That's a bad. That. How can that be? Yeah. They don't even have. A, they don't have a tight end or a wing back over there. Quick pass out. It's going to be our first passing yardage of the night. That almost looked bad. Horowitz <laughs> uh, with a, a good catch and run. Van Ness. Sam Frank with the block. His first catch of the night. Uh oh. And he's hurt. He is coming off. Watch number seven with the blocks here. If he, if he gets in there, picture there, he drives the. But uh, either cramping or slight leg injury. Second down and 11. Korowitz, we don't need him hurt at all. Do we? And uh, Howard stacking up at right at the line of scrimmage. Gain of maybe a yard, but that's all for Kelly. Yep, that penalty. Kelly carrying the ball. Olsen and Rick. You know what happened, Marty, is they throw the flag where they, th you know, where they think the penalty is. But it, against the wind, you can't throw the flag that far. And so that's why when they spot fouled it, it was back farther. I mean, there's no way. He, if it was a hold, it had to be on a lineman. Yeah. And uh, well, that was. Saw what he saw, I guess. Well, that would have been ten. way back right, right here. Oh. Yes. And they're going to get a penalty uh, grabbing the helmet. <laughs> Wish I could have seen who made the catch, Chris. The right end, curling in, and there you see grabbing the helmet. That's bad. Yep. It's going to be first and ten. And two passes on this drive into the wind. That's the first one basically against the wind. That hung up there for a while. It's first down on the 27 yard line. Pickup of about eight yards. Kelly is a deep back. We got a man in motion. A little trap inside. Kelly uh, looked like he was going to break it for more, but a good tackle by Howard's Groves, uh, Trent Benninghaus. Gain of five. Nice kick out block. Good call on that one, Chris. Kelly piling up the carries, Chris. He's got nine so far this uh, quarter. Forty six yards so far. Give Takes it, it inside, yeah. He gets it down just inside the twenty yard line. It'll be at the nineteenth, so give him a gain of three. Be third and two. I wonder if it's Alex Tim's time. Yeah, maybe. Or at least give it to him twice. I'll tell you, this six minute drive already. We talked about time and possession for Howard's. Dominated in the first half, 16 minutes to eight minutes. Exactly how Going freaky down, that is. This is a six minute drive right here. Pitch out, Kelly. Oh, uh, the lead blocker didn't throw a block. I don't like that call Ran at all. right by. I didn't think the call was bad. You just got to have some blocking up there. Yeah. They keep missing the early block, and on fourth down here. You got to go for it, I would yep. think. I would have punched it with, what do you got Tim there for? 
Watch the lead blocker. Tim. Tim, right by the guy. Yeah, he doesn't. It's a couple hit. times we've seen that. Yep, got to hit the first guy. Well, here we, we go. Get up into the hole. KLC's turn on. Uh, Big play. We've got down. wide receivers out here on the left, two of them. Nope. And give it to Kelly right up the middle, first and he down. bursts through. He's inside the 15 yard line, first down. Feed Kelly again. He is. We're going to be under five minutes of the third quarter. Ball is spotted on about the uh, 12 yard line, 13 yard line. This time we've got wide receivers left and right. Kelly's the deep back, Tim is the up back. They pitch it, they're going to run a left end sweep. Kelly. Getting what he can, I thought there looked like there was an opening if you could have got by a defender off to the left, but he couldn't make the cutback. It's going to be second down. Loses a yard on the play. A lot more difficult to run uh, east and west, Marty, than north and south. Yeah, exactly. Second and 11. Right. Ball spotted on here the 14. Here you see the replay. Real nice and slow here. You can see the pursuit by the Tigers. Good. Job there, Scott. Right up the middle. Uh, Kelly's not going to get much. Gets it down to about the 12, maybe. Basically, got the yard back that he lost. 402 and counting. Third and 10. Kelly has uh, 13 carries for uh, 51 yards in the quarter. Just don't want him to throw a pass here that floats and gets picked off in a pick six. A little misdirection played. Gets him down inside the 10 yard line to about the nine. Well short of the first down. Yeah, 27 yard field goal, but. Yeah, I don't think so. I just don't like the. Uh, Alex now Chances. is making a stop at Howard's that time. Fourth and seven, KLC. Fourth and seven from the nine, huh? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, well, by the way, uh, Kelly has 103 yards in the game now. And we get whistles, timeout. Sheboygan Kohler with uh, 302 KLC. left. <laughs> They're basically running the quarter out. <laughs> One squad taking the ball, marching it right down the field. Next week, uh, WSCS TV Sports will be at uh, South High School when they host De Pere. Uh, we look forward to bringing you uh, that ball game. Gives us another chance to see uh, South. Uh, they had a real nice article in the morning, this morning's press about them, about the balance with the offense, uh, passing and running. Uh, Boris is up to, I believe, number five in the state in rushing now. Oh, he, he's uh, hes had a heck of a year. He's, uh, he was he's the real deal. Yeah, he was 23rd in the state. But that kid from Wanake, who uh, Coach Rice's brother coaches for, he, that guy's up like 240 yards on Boris. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Have a year. <laughs> yeah. You think Boris is a boy? He got, what, 280 yards? We had him for 283 last week. He had 283 himself. And uh, not gaining too much ground. All right, here we go. That didn't Quick look right. snap. And uh, flags all over the place. I don't think the offense was set long nope. enough. It's going to be a legal procedure it's on too bad. Uh, Lutheran Kohler. That would have been six. But obviously, Howard's jumped. Excuse me, KLC jumped. And... Uh, Another penalty that's going to hurt them. Luke Heinen was the uh, intended receiver on that uh, play. It's illegal procedure wow. on Sheboygan Kohler. Remain fourth down. Now well, it's going to be fourth and 12 from the 14. Fourth down, eight and try a 31-yarder for KLC. Watch out for the fake. 
Good snap and set. The kick is blocked. And uh, the picker picks it up. And he's going to get it down inside the 14 yard line. And it's going to, Howards is going to take over. Well, we said every time we come out here, we see interesting situations. There was a, almost a nine minute drive and no points. You know, I think he kicked it way too low. Yep. That was part of the problem. Good snap, kick was oh, low. Oh, really low. <laughs> it almost hit a defender in the waist. Well, Howard is on offense. Yep, ball on the 15 yard line. Give it off to uh, Strag, and uh, he gets it out to uh, about the 20, 21 yard line. About a five yard pickup. Ball carried by Alex Strag. Luke Heinen making the stop for KLC. 2.30 remaining in the quarter. Couple of quick baseball updates for you. The Brewers up 2-0 in the middle of the eighth against the Pirates. Brewers winning 2-0. 2, zero. two zero, Brewers in the eighth. Navani. Two wide receivers off to the uh, right-hand side. Ethan Brinkman is the slot man. And getting the edge. His strag and he's got a foul or a flag, I mean, inside oh, the 30. Let's see what strike. that's all about. Well, Howard has not been called for a hold yet. Let's see, look at it. That might be uh, the hold no, right stopped. behind the, uh, flag on the play. ball carrier. You can see, yeah, he actually pulled the jersey away from his shirt. Yep. Well, they went in the first half with very little flag play, and uh, yep. they're starting to see it now. It's going to be holding. Not as big of a penalty because of the place of it. Ball is spotted on the, I guess, 18-yard line. The Dodgers nearly tripling up your beloved Cubs 14-5 today. 14 to five over the Cubs? Yeah, he got three runs off of Kershaw in the first. <laughs> Couldn't do much after that. Wow, that's too bad. Strag trying to bounce it to the outside. Pretty good defense played that time by Sheboygan Kohler. It's gonna be third down. Give him a six yard gain on that. Michael Gesch on the tackle there for KLC. Their leading tackler we mentioned his name in the first half. He's number 64. All right, let's say you stop him. It's fourth and one from this position on the field. You're going to punt her? Oh, yeah, with the wind. Oh, yeah. Stanchik under center. Fumble. Fumble on the snap. Who's got it? We'll see if the turnover reciprocates from the first half, but no, they're signaling fourth down, Marty. Yep, Two fourth down. Now that's an easy decision now. First punt for Howard. There you see it. The ball is on the ground. A couple blue shirts there, but uh, the most important person to have the ball was in the color white. All righty. Fourth down. Lutheran Kohler uh, suspecting it may be a, fa a fake. But, no way. Uh, no way. Chris says no. The punter has a and dandy, a spiral that carries way down, bounces it just inside the 40, and takes a good bounce for Howard's Grove down at the 30-yard line. We got a late flag, Chris. 54. They're going to get 54 on Howard's. And let me tell you this. There was a late hit, but that was a poor position to place your receiver there. That was... Got to get him back deep geez, enough. It wasn't even close. This See is what the penalty uh, is. 54, this personal foul. Yes. Howard's Grove. Easily. Wow. Not even by the play either. I mean, Not what's, even what's close. the point? Yep. So you're saying it was number 54? I am. Show us that play again, Scott. See if we can uh, get the perpetrator on camera. 
Well, it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Too bad it's not a spot foul on this one. Yeah, here we go. Let's see. They do. They're talking it over. Here's, here it is. No, nope, that's the run. Okay. It looks like they're going to trot back to the 30 and mark it off from there, possibly. Yep. Personal fall face mask on Howard's Grove. We knew that. It's going to be first down for... Uh, Sheboygan Kohler. And uh, I think it's going to be at the 40, 45 or 46? 46 yard line. Here, Scott's got it now. Look down at the bot, up. It's going to nope. go way back. Yeah, yeah we're not, we're not it's out of camera angle. All right, here we go. It's first and 10. Lutheran Kohler ball on the 46. Under a minute left. This may be the last play of the quarter. Kelly bounces it to the outside. He's got room. He's at the 45, 40, 35, cut back, and goes down at the 30 yard line. That's all effort, Caleb Kelly. 24 yard run. Some guys will run out of bounds, not Kelly. Now what you do is let it run out. Start over, get you guys, get a drink of water. Bring them over here. Bring them over here. Take the wind. Oh, they're calling them down at the 32-yard uh, line. We're not going to get a playoff. Coach about to get you guys a drink of water. Make that a 22-yard run. Oh, they are going to get a play. Just at the buzzer. Kelly. Gets stood up uh, and pushed back at the 30-yard uh, line. That's just, oh boy. It's that big, long run. I would have rather have had him get a drink of water, get those sea legs set. Okay, that's it. Two-yard pickup. And uh, we're at the end of playing action. Watch this uh, little bit of a cutback. Whoop! <laughs> Brinkman and Fritz couldn't slam on the brakes quick enough. Great replay and great effort, Caleb Kelly. Second. A healthy diet and plenty of exercise are keys to success, both on and off the ice. Teaching kids how to eat right will give them the fuel they need to be at their very best. Growing bodies need lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and low-fat dairy to be healthy and strong. A registered dietitian can work with your family to help you create nutritious meals you will love. And don't forget to exercise for at least 60 minutes every day. Visit kidseatright.org for more information. That, 79 yards for uh, Kelly in the 30. He now has 127 in the game on uh, 28 carries. So he's having a, they're, they're riding him, Chris. But uh, Howard's Grove was able to uh, withstand the pounding in that uh, third quarter. Kept them scoreless. It's second and eight. Ball on the 30. Kelly gets hit in the backfield. It's going to be a loss. Well, the key now is to get over the goal line, I think, Marty, huh? Say that again? Wouldn't the uh, goal kind of be now to get over the goal line? Yeah, really. Isn't that the truth? Dominated the half, and a quick one it is. Boy, it's all green on my sheet in that third quarter. There's only four and a punt. Four play, three offensive plays in the punt. Uh, Crisscross in the backfield, give it Kelly, second man through. He gets it down to about the 30, maybe a little bit inside the 30. Not much though, it's gonna be fourth down. Now you have the win there. Why, why won't you throw that time? Third and nine. Because Kelly's been the man. Well, he got stuffed Kowitz. three straight plays that time. <laughs> yeah, Kowitz in ball game, pick up a one. Be third down and eight. Fourth down. Fourth and down and eight. Pardon yep. me. Yep. Here we go. Wide receivers, or wide receiver off to the right. Fake. Good rush. 
And thrown down, good sack made out there by Howard's Grove, Jonah Ger Gerber. Big play. Ball all the way out to the 43, 42 yard line. It's a loss of 12. Another promising drive ends up yeah. with zero. Now it's up to the defense to uh, stand tall for uh, Sheboygan Kohler. There's a fake. Of course, let's send Gerber. the house. I yeah. would too. Gerber never fell for the fake. He well, was going right after the quarterback. Well, yeah. You, everybody in the house knew they're going to throw the ball. Stanchik uh, keeps it. He's got running room. He's down to the 40, the 30. Back he gets breaker. to the end zone. Backbreaker. Knocked out of bounds inside the five yard line. Stanchik with a big gain. Ball carried by the quarterback, Luke Stanchik. First and goal for the Tigers at the four yard line. That's a backbreaker. Fifty-four yard gain. He's up over a hundred. Strag right up the middle into the end zone touchdown. Touchdown Howard's row, Alex Strag, number 22, 20 to 8 Howards. That uh, you're right about the backbreaker part, Chris. You know, based on the way they've run the ball the last two plays, I wouldn't be surprised if they just go for the two. So you're gonna see good blocking up front. His third touchdown of the game. Yep. And they are going for two. Nice Pass play. Pass into the end zone. Gerber makes the catch for the two-pointer. That makes it 22 to eight. And how appropriate. The person who uh, had the big sack yeah, gets the uh, bonus two. Drake has touchdown runs of 24, 5, and 4. Uh, the big play, of course, was the sack by Gerber. And uh, I'm not sure if it put the game out of reach, but uh, they're on life support. It hurts, Chris, when you get all that time of possession and you don't get any points out of it. Twice you had golden opportunity to score, and uh, you end up both your chances, and you get nothing. Got all the way down to the nine, and you had the ball down to about the 30, 30, 35. Ethan Brinkman getting ready to uh, do the kickoff and uh, the return men for uh, Sheboygan Kohler are stationed at the 20 yard line, Chris. Very short, this kick coming against the wind. Watch number 21, he's made every play on these kickoffs. Oh, ball is hit, picked up at the Watch 20 Watch 21, line. he got him again. Zach Fritz. Zach Fritz. Daddy's got to be happy about that. Three, three tackles on kickoffs. All right, ball is uh, spotted on the 30. You might have been too late. It's all over. It is all over. Picked up. Jason Unger, yeah. alumni at Kohler, knows that it's well nice play out there. Howard's the Grove uh, picking it up a little bit, and uh, so even though they got <laughs> run, uh, run down, they were able to keep Sheboygan from scoring points, and that was key. And then the big play, the 54-yard run, was a killer. Kelly, uh, he's got to be tired, Chris. Yep. Well, it, it's 
just not enough balance. I mean, I, I understand he's doing very well, and but uh, he gets tired too. <laughs> So far, uh, in this quarter anyway, he's got three carries for uh, zero yards. He had a plus, a minus one, and then a plus one, and this one here for no gain. I think they'd be throwing a little bit more possibly, Chris. With the wind, you mentioned that a few times. A little out pattern, the pass is no good by Van Ness. Well, just a little balance, you know, let, you know, for, you know not just, uh, Caleb carry the ball, but uh, interchange Tim in there a little bit. And how many carries did you say Caleb had in the third quarter? He had 16 in the third. 16 carries. <laughs> yep, he's got 19 in the second half. That's a lot of carries. And uh, I don't think I had 16 carries in a game in high school. Yeah, that's a lot of carry. Gets tired. I wish I would have been better. Maybe they'd have given me the ball more. Well, I'm just saying, don't not give him the ball. I said just. Balance Mix it, it up, up a little bit, right? Quick drop, pass over the middle, is caught. Nice catch made by uh, Luke Heinen. Two guys have the and ball. And he gets it down to about the 40, or up to the 48. Howard's Grove guy tried to get it too. I think that was Fritz. Here's just a nice, simple, over the middle pass and catch. Good zip on that ball. Luke Heinen came into the game with three catches. What I liked about that is the uh, quarterback did a quick drop. And he didn't waste any motion getting back and getting right. set to throw. Quick out. Catch is uh, attempted but not made by uh, Sam Frame. It's going to be second and ten. Cornerback's favorite play there just can come up on a high pass and get him in the ribs. Yep. It's going to be second and ten. Trotting off the field is Heinen. Boy, he'd love to have him out there during these uh, passing downs. Two wide receivers off to the right. Kelly the deep back. Now you might be able to run Kelly. Pitch it out, going to the left. Tries to cut it back. Bounces to the outside. He's got the first down, and he's knocked down at the 35-yard line. And you might ask yourself, well, why did you say that? Well, I noticed that now the linebackers are a little more dropped back a little bit. The defensive backs are back a little bit, thinking that KLC might pass, which creates a little more opening for your running game. That's why we were talking about a little more balance there. And uh, when well, not everybody's up in the box or up on the line of scrimmage, a little more holes are out there for your running back. First and 10, ball spotted on the 35 yard line, 8.50 and counting in the fourth quarter. Same play, other way. Yep, he's trying to find room. Stringing it out was Howard's Grove, a good play. They're gonna hit him for a loss. Gerber again. I think it's second down and 11. And you can see Kelly, see, notice number 22 here walking right by the official, a little slower there. He's worked a lot in this half. We're down to 8-18 left in the game. They've given him the ball, that's for sure. Wide receivers left and right. Tim is the up back, Kelly's the deep back. And a good rush by Howard's Grove. They're gonna get the sack, making the play that time was uh, Drew Ackwright coming right up the middle to make the sack at the 42, loss of six. And I believe Van Ess is hurt. Official timeout. He was the gentleman that got sacked, Chris. We never like it when the trainer has to come out on the field. You know, I was thinking as these last couple of plays were being run, I couldn't do a great deal of checking, but you know, we haven't seen uh, Chorowitz, have we? You mentioned that he went out, he looked like he got hurt. Was that back in the early, in the, in the second, in the first half? You know, I haven't noticed, uh, that's not good. They're taking uh, Van S, putting him on the table. Hurt a leg. Now Frank is your quarterback. Okay, Frank. And there's no QB next to his name on the, on the roster 
which is not a good thing. That yeah, means you're down your third quarterback. Yeah, that is not a good thing. You're right. Got the handoff. They give it to Tim, who's barreling forward. He gets it down to the 35. Pick up a seven. I think they should have used him a little more. No pun intended. Not him, but Tim. A little more often earlier. It's going to be fourth and ten. Well, Frank got the center center snap. He bobbled it a little bit, but he did get it to his running back, who uh, made a good run. Unfortunately, it's still third down and ten. Fourth and ten, pardon me. Second back through, Kelly up the middle, not going to get there, and he gets bent back, and uh, he might be hurt, Chris. Boy, that did not look good. He's not, he's not bouncing up. He's staying down. It looked right away like he just got bent over backwards, Chris, and uh, it did not look good. Ball carried by Kelly. I hope he's okay. Take a look. He goes up and goes, oh, he got bent over backwards. Yeah, he got caught under some players, and uh, that's never a good thing. Right there. Going to see the Badgers tomorrow, Marty. Hey. Didn't Bowling Green beat uh, Indiana last week? By three. Yeah, I mean yeah. it. Uh, and the Badgers are 23-point favorites. Okay, so it may not be that close. Well, I just think the Badgers have no. little no. work yet to do. Tell me the do. truth. Are you going to hit Regent Street or not? State Street? Either one. <laughs> I heard there's Lost. some gin mills on either one. I think I'm going to be at Union South. I we always kind of go and watch was, the band I was talking before to one the game. Of the, uh, one of the aides Park by State Street, over at Jefferson uh, yesterday, her son just turned 21, and he was going to head over, Ness was last night, was going to head over to the Nitty Gritty. Oh, yeah. I guess that's the place to go when you're 21. Well, right, that's right by the Cole Center there. By the way, you got some bad news. Tom Grams is not getting his Badger basketball tickets like he's had in the past. Why is that? Uh, is some relatives... Uh, weren't going to make them available this year. Because <laughs> they're going to be top five Yeah, because they're good. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, Tom you know, would get a number of tickets, and uh, because he spent so much time in the winter down in Florida, you know, he would sell yeah. them. And yeah. uh, I always got a game or two. And, yeah. you know, it's, now we're going to have to be just like the masses and go on StubHub or something. That's... <laughs> I'll tell you. Although that's what we did when we went and saw him play in Anaheim. When they won that Thursday, we got on, on the internet. My wife got on her. Yeah, that's uh, Van S. not looking good there. And uh, Kelly is still down on the field. So not a good thing. But yeah. anyway, we got on, on the internet, and she got a room, and uh, I got a couple tickets, and we went to the game on Saturday. Well, I'm... Good to see Caleb Kelly yeah, up. Yeah, that is awesome. And he's, you know, he's, he's going to be hurting a little bit, but uh, oh, that's where you worry about ligaments. And, yeah, uh, exactly. At least he's walking off. There's 7:04 left in the ball game. Howard's Grove is up 22 to eight. Uh, Lutheran, Sheboygan Lutheran, Kohler Christian scored first in the first quarter, and then uh, Howard scored. Uh, Two quick touchdowns to take a lead at halftime. Now they scored a f early fourth quarter touchdown, and uh, they look to be on their way to a win here tonight. Well, unless they turn over the ball or do something. Yeah, you're right. Turnovers. This is just the. Stanchik pouncing it to the outside. Now he cuts it up, gets it up to the 40 yard line. It's going to be a gain of about seven. Second down. Just the third time that Howard has had the ball in the uh, second half. And uh, the way this game is cruising along. Sorry, second three. I've got uh, Stanchik for uh, 60 yards on two carries here in the fourth quarter. And uh, he is up over the 100-yard mark in the ball game. So 
Howards has two 100 yard ball carriers. Drag gets it up over the 50, uh, pardon me, over the 45. Well, this is one if the KLC does not make a rally here that maybe a woulda, coulda, shoulda, couple plays here and there, couple penalties and a turnover, now you got a and didn't finish a, a drive. Had a complaint about you. In that pregame interview we did, you didn't mention anything about stopping the big play. And it was the big play that was the backbreaker, actually. Yeah. But that's all right, we'll cut you some slack on that. And I had the turnover. Yeah, that you did. But Boom, uh, Olsen barreling forward, gets it uh, over the 50 into uh, Sheboygan Kohler territory. Boy, you know, there's five and a half minutes left and you just feel like it's almost in the bank for uh, Howard's Grove and there's still five minutes left but the way these teams are running the ball and you, very difficult for each team to stop the other team. You think this, it's almost like a four score lead instead of just a two score lead. Yeah, I agree with you there. Rolling down to five minutes left in the ball game. But three of the uh, KLC skill players are on the bench. They're top three yeah. <laughs> besides Tim. Three out of the wow. four. Yeah. And quick timeout by uh, Howard. Next week, September 26th, we are going to be at uh, South High School when they host a pier. Uh, Chris and I were talking a little bit about this ball game, and uh, the way South has been playing, uh, they certainly have a very good chance of uh, beating De Pere. And uh, I think it mentioned in the paper they need uh, two more wins yep. to, uh, you know, have a great shot at the playoffs. And uh, you know, I hate to say it, but let's call a spade a spade. They should beat North. Yeah, I think that's a definite. I shouldn't say a definite win, but they should beat them. And if they can win that game, and if they can win this game uh, next week well, against the Pier, heavily favored against North. But you know, those North South games, anything can happen. Exactly, you're but, right. Uh, they. The schedule is favorable for South this year, you know, with uh, East and West still in the league. Um, and they got both those wins, so. All righty, it's going to be second down and about four. Strag is the deep back. They give it to him, and he gets oh. met right at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. He's actually going to lose a yard. Ball carried by Alex Strag. Well, they're going to mark him right at the line of scrimmage, Marty. He lost the yard. They, referees don't know what they're doing. <laughs> marked at the 49. I agree with you. I gave him a loss. <laughs> it looked like a loss. It didn't look like he got back to the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, well, probably fortunately, I am not the official stat guy. <laughs> 420 and counting. Well, you did a nice job last week. You and uh, John Shrink both had... Uh, yeah, we had him for 286. Boris Ristovoyevic just kind of rolls off your tongue. Yep. Third down. Stanchik cutting it back up the middle. He's oh. going to be very close, but I think he's going to be a little bit short. Depends how hungry the referees are. Okay. Uh, they're not that hungry. Well, you know, they would probably rather have it this way because if Howard gets the first down after this, that takes off more time. More time, yeah. Well, you got this all figured out, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you are the man. The best Division Three conference in the nation will be in action again on Saturday. Football. UW Eau Claire at Wheaton, Illinois. All right, it's going to be fourth and about two. Howard's Grove not bashful about going for it on fourth down. Clock running, 3:20 left. Van Ness is in crutches. Kelly is hurt. His yeah, knees yeah, all yeah. taped up. Boom. Strag. Tough on the ground tonight. It's going to be first and ten. Gonna spot that ball at the 41. Finish off the WEAC schedule for this Saturday. UW Oshkosh traveling out to South Dakota State. 
Ord does, did a good job tonight, Chris. They ran the ball. They're not gonna get much in the passing game, but they didn't need it, let's face it. You know, if you're running the ball and been able to do that, why would you? Yep. Olsen right up the middle. Two, Ole. 2.30 and counting. Olsen carrying the ball. Olsen goes for five. In on the tackle for KLC, second down and five. Sam Kohler on the stop again. Coach Z wants me to announce that Albion, Michigan. Next uh, game for uh, Sheboygan Kohler is at Random Lake. Not sure where Howard's goes next week. I think they might go out to Cedar Grove, Belgium. That'll be a tough game for them. Well, you know, Howard's just does what they do for years. You know, they run the football. Was that Very Olsen few, again? I believe so. Very Olsen few penalties, the and uh, they didn't turn the ball over. And you know, they just run the ball. It's not uh, anything complicated, or it's it's just straight up. This is what we do. And uh, stop us. Yep. And they play good defense. They forced KLC into a couple long drives, and KLC did not have the short field, so could not convert Van into touchdowns. And on crutches, Chris. His yep. uh, ankle, his right oh, yeah. ankle, is. Uh, Wrapped up. Stanchik on the uh, quarterback keeper goes uh, virtually nowhere. And uh, KLC gets to go back out on the field. Stanchik carrying the ball for the Tigers. Coates on the stop for KLC, second down. The yard marker guy has got it marked at four. Yep. And I was thinking, what in the world? Todd, I think, Decker there. He's thinking basketball plays. <laughs> He's not worried. Speaking of basketball, I saw Brett Flipsy in the crowd right yep. below us. And yep. uh, Coach Verhagen's here, too. Verhagen's here. Good support for the uh, yeah, Lutheran and Christian. Stanchik under center. Gives it to Strag. Christian should he have a pretty nice team. Down. Yeah, they're going to oh, be better this year, Kevin. that's for sure. Sam Frame making the first stop. And with 30 seconds left, we have another injured KLC. player. Oh, man. You don't like that. Well, that's one of those where Howard's could have been taking a knee. I suppose. Oh boy. Coulda, woulda, shouldas. Yep. Another bummer, Chris. No interviews. It's hard to tell. For for whatever reason, on all these replays, our monitor has really got uh, a distorted picture. It's hard to read numbers and things. Uh, is that uh, Heinen? Number 89? No. <laughs> or is that. I hope not. All leg injuries. Yeah, the clock is running, 29, 28. Nope. Takes a knee. It's 28. 13, 10, Tyler that's going to be it. That's going to be the ball game. Final score, Howard's 22, KLC 8. Well, Chris, a couple of closing comments by you, and then uh, we'll wrap up the broadcast. Well, I thought KLC came out and did what they needed to do. The only problem is they didn't pu punch it over the goal line, and uh, that's the name of the game. They just didn't finish tonight, and uh, one bad turnover in the first half also led to an easy score for Howard. A lot of hope there, but I'll tell you what, they, the KLC squad is sure banged up. For the crew, and tonight we didn't mention them all night, but Scott Mailoff did an excellent job in the truck with the replays and uh, getting us the pictures going. Richard Bartson was our lone cameraman tonight. Richard always does a great job with that. Uh, for my partner Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching everybody. 
We'll see you next week when the Pure invades Sheboygan South. But uh, until then, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road.